Hello everybody. What I wanted to kind of go over with you all today was uh, making a character in Pathfinder. I've gotten really, really into Pathfinder lately. Uh, I've just been absolutely loving it. And I know there's a lot of interest in learning how to play it and learning the game. So the very first thing I kind of wanted to do in this little series, I'm not sure how long I'll keep it up for, um, but I wanted to actually go through the process of creating a character. I actually do have some characters that I'm putting together for a one-shot, just some pre-generated ones. And uh, I figured this would be a great opportunity to kind of show off what I do, how to do it, and, and all of that. Um, so the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to make one of the simplest characters we possibly can, which is a sword and board fighter. Uh, your sword and board fighter, sword and you know, sword and shield fighter is, is really where we're going to start. So if you go to Mythweavers, uh, you know, we'll, we'll start from the very beginning here. Uh, you can make an account at Mythweavers. I really like Mythweavers because it allows you to save all of your sheets. It allows you to kind of access them from anywhere, and uh, it's fantastic. By the way, if I sound different, I do apologize. Uh, my last headset kind of broke out. Um, you know, the one ear wasn't working, and, uh, you know, I wasn't really too much I could do to fix it, so I bought a new one. The mic quality isn't that isn't as great as the last one, but I'm hoping it's good enough. Uh, definitely leave me any feedback if you would. But anyway, we've got the Mythweaver site here. I'm going to go to Sheets, and I'm going to make up a new one. So we'll go to New Sheet. Um, I'm going to call this my Human Fighter. Uh, and I, I have a Eclipse one-shot. Um, I'm going to set the screen to Pathfinder and create it up. And here we are. So this is our fighter obviously looks fantastic. One thing to definitely note, folks, that when you go to uh, Mythweavers, you want to make sure that you have Remember Me checked in or Stay Signed In or something like that. It can get really frustrating if uh, you do a ton of work and you forget to save. So because these are pre-generated characters, I don't really care about the name, the player, the alignment. None of that stuff matters to me. That's more of the players. Um, I'm going to give him... He's a class of a fighter, a human and level three. Uh, to, to give you the difference, a one shot is basically it's all wrapped up in one night. The whole adventure really is only one night long while a campaign spawns multiple nights. That's really it. So the first thing we want to do, and again, age, gender, height, these are things that the player can worry about. It doesn't really affect the game itself. So our sword and board fire, um, I'd run on something called a point buy system. There's a couple ways of rolling up a character's stats. The stats are really who you are and what makes you who you are. Uh, so the first thing I, I kind of want to do is I, I do point buy. And what point buy means is that you get X amount of points and you use those points to make your, uh, make your stats better. Um, everything starts at 10. So if you ever, you ever kind of think of the average, an average person is 10 in everything. Uh, the average human is 10 strong, 10 decks, 10 con, 10 in. Uh, that's that's really what the average person is. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here. Let me reset everything back down to 10. And uh, that's really where you need to begin. Um, you need to figure out your race and your class. So I'm going to go with a human fighter. And the human gets the ability to add 2, plus 2 to anything. So... We're going to start going down the line. I actually have already kind of figured this out. I'm going to set strength to 14, and that's going to be the one that I give myself a plus 2. Uh, I'm doing a 20-point buy, by the way. I'm going to set my dex to 13. Uh, my constitution to... Uh, he's going to be sword and board, board, so we're going to set that high. And we're going to set wisdom to 12. Why this? Uh, one of the things, I do not like to optimize my characters. Optimizing means you make them the very best that they can be by the video game. So, a fighter doesn't really need int, doesn't need wisdom, doesn't need charisma. Now, I mean, look what I can do with this stuff. Shit, I can bring that up pretty damn high. I mean, you know, this is, this is just kind of dumb. Uh, he's this big dumb brute. I hate playing like this. Uh, this, to me, really isn't fun. And a lot of people who will tank their stats to something like a 7 really aren't going to play the stat like that. I mean, if you think of 10 as the average, 7 is just really, really kind of bad. So I'm going to set this back to 14, dex at 13, 
Constitution at 16, and Wisdom at 12. We'll put these back up to average, and we're good there. I'll explain my Wisdom of 12 a little bit later, but this in essence is who we are. So we're going to put in a strength score of actually 16, because remember I'm allowed to add uh, 2 to any stat that I want. Dex at 13, Con at 16, Int at 10, Wisdom at 12, Charisma at 10. So let's explain what each of these kind of means and what each one is. Strength is primarily, obviously, how strong you are. It's primarily going to be used for your melee chance to hit an enemy, your melee damage, and uh, some of your strength-based skills, such as climbing or swimming. Uh, dexterity is kind of how nimble you are, how agile you are. Uh, if you think of like a Legolas, who is, you know, really can do all these crazy acrobatics and shit like that, uh, that's, that's your dexterity. Um, so it's important for a sword and board fighter, but not insanely so. Your constitution is how hardy you are. Oh, I'm sorry, I should go over what dex impacts. So dex is going to impact, um your chance to hit with a bow. It doesn't impact damage with a bow, and for kind of experts out there, or for people who are veterans to Pathfinder, I'm making this simple. I understand compound bows and other stuff. I, I'm making it simple, and that's even strength. I, 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 I know the rules pretty well. I, I want to make it as easy as possible. Uh, so dex is primarily going to be used for your initiative, which is when you go in a turn order. It's going to be used for your uh, to help boost your armor class. That's how hard you are to hit. So if you think of someone who's like a ninja who's really agile, they're harder to hit. It's going to help with your reflex saves. Uh, reflex saves are like if you trigger a trap or if a fireball gets cast, it's your chance. I, I think of like jumping out of the way and dodging it where you're not even consciously thinking about it. Your character just does it by reflex. And uh, it'll affect dexterity-based skill checks such as um, stealthing, acrobatics, escape artists, stuff like that. The next is going to be your intelligence. Your intelligence is just that. How smart is your character? Uh, how well do they grasp things like physics or thing, you know, the, the, the difficult questions of the world? Um, I consider intelligence more like mathematics, more of precise, the precise scientist, so to speak. Um, so a fighter really doesn't need that. A fighter, it's fine to be, you know, of an average intelligence, but if he's not solving calculus, really not a big deal. Your wisdom, uh, and intelligence is basically, sorry, going to imp impact stuff that isn't going to deal with our fighter. Uh, really doesn't uh, deal with it too much, so I'm not going to go into it for this character. I may make up a wizard and kind of go over what will impact then. Uh, your wisdom will impact basically how philosophical maybe you are, or I, I can think of someone, um, one of the easiest ways to differentiate wisdom and intelligence is if you've ever seen, uh, I, I hate the show, but The Big Bang Theory, Sheldon, very, very smart, very intelligent, not very wise, doesn't, doesn't really get stuff, doesn't, doesn't get the, the, the survival skills, so to speak, um, so I, I pick wisdom kind of like how philosophical you are, but also how a, a farmer could be very wise, knows, can kind of just feel the weather, um, things like that. So that, that's what I, I put more in the wisdom category. Um, you know, Forrest Gump might be wiser, but not very intelligent. The absent-minded professor might be very intelligent, but not very wise. Just something to kind of food for thought it. And uh, charisma is your strength of personality. It's, it's kind of how, how much people want to follow you, uh, how likable you are. There's people out there that have great charisma, and not all of them are great-looking people. There are some people out there that don't look great, but they just have this essence about them that makes you want to follow them. Uh, again, it, it's, it's what's called a dump stat. A lot of people don't need charisma, so they'll dump it. They'll, they'll tank it as low as they can. I hate playing that because it, it's just not fun to play an unlikable character. And I feel like if you're going to take a penalty in something, you should play like you're taking a penalty in something. So that goes over our, our stats here.
Uh, and I'm just going to kind of go through the sheet and we may go back to stuff. But, but that's in essence the core of who we are as stats. Um, the next thing we're going to go over is how do we calculate up our hit points. Uh, hit points are obviously how many hit points, how, many, how much damage can you take before you fall. Um, so the way that you do a hit point is you have to look at what your class is. So we're going to go to the Paizo website here. I'm going to go to classes. I'm going to go to fighter. I see that they're a hit die 10. So a hit die 10 means that you get 10 hit points every level, sort of. You can get a maximum of 10 hit points. Let's go to someone like a sorcerer, a D6, which is what we expect. We wouldn't expect someone who's an arcane master to have as many hit points as a fighter. So let's go back to our fighter here. What most people do is they grant max hit points for level one. So automatic 10 right off the bat, no problem. So uh, we'll, I'm just gonna start marking into here uh, just to make things easier. You know, I'll put into age here. Um, so we got those 10 hit points right off the bat. Actually, I'll do it. I'll do it here. So you can see it's, you know, not total attack. I, I'm just putting that in there for note taking sake. So that's our level one. Now, what I also do is I like to give level two max hit points. This is up to your DM. Uh, it's what I do. It's up to your DM. You have to ask them how they want to handle hit points. Most, I would say, will give you the choice after le level one you can roll the number. So I can roll a 10-sided dice, and however many, however many hit points show up on there, that's what I get. Or you can take the average. You can take five, right? So if a, a D6, like our sorcerer, would get three. Uh, the fighter would get five. So because I do 10 for two levels, I'm going to do something like this. Level one is 10, level two is 10, and level three is five. Me personally, I always roll it uh, when I play characters just because I like to, but there's that. So we have 25 hit points right now that we get just from levels. Now, we do also get a constitution bonus. Because our guy is a little beefier and a little heftier, he gets three hit points every single level. So we have 25 plus three plus three plus three for our three levels. 34 hit points, right? 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. So we're now at a total of 34 hit points. Again, there's a little more to it. Pathfinder allows for something called favored classes. The favored class is kind of what you really, what your character shines at. And you get a little bonus for it. Uh, not a huge bonus, but a pretty nice one. So what you get is you can take a choice. I'm going to say my favorite class is a fighter. Generally, your favorite class is whatever you take the first one in, uh, your first level in. Doesn't have to be, but that's, that's generally how, I, how I'll play it. So you can choose to either get a skill point or a level, or a, I'm sorry, a skill point or a hit point every single level. As a frontline tank or a frontline beefy fighter, I want the hit points. So I add another three. So we're at 34 plus 3, giving us a total of 37 hit points. Nice and easy. Perfect. The next thing, caster level, we don't really have to worry about a niche. Um, well, let's go to touch. Uh, actually, we're going to save AC. I'm sorry. We're going to save armor class for later because some things are going to get impacted by this. So we're going to change. We're going to save this for later. Uh, initiative is when you go in the round so whenever you get into combat you roll a 20-sided dice and you add your initiative it's generally just your dexterity and a miscellaneous bonus miscellaneous might be you took the feat improved initiative it might be you took the trait to get a better initiative whatever it might be those numbers will add together to give you your initiative your speed is going to be based on a couple of things but primarily it's your race so let's take a look at what a human is. A human is, I already know the answer, but it's 30 feet. So humans have a base speed of 30 feet. Bam. Nice and easy. The next thing we want to look at is our saves. 
our saves are whenever something comes up that really isn't combat, but you still have to prevent from happening. A save can happen in combat, but it's generally not the direct result. And it can be. Uh, you know what? Let me let me kind of explain. Fortitude is how, again, beefy I want to use the word, but how resistant you are to nastiness in your body. Um, someone who could drink a lot of alcohol has a higher fortitude. Someone who could, you know, uh, not get sick often or is just, it seems like they can last forever. That's your fortitude. So let's go back to our class, fighter. And we see the level 3 fighter has a fortitude save of plus 3. Alright, so we're going to give him base save of 3. The reflex save is your chance of jumping out of the way of something. I talked about it a little bit in Dex, but it's me jumping out of the way of a fireball, or if I trigger a trap and I jump away real quick, that's your reflex. We get up a 1. And the ability modifier is what helps it, right? So the ability modifier for fortitude is your constitution. Makes sense. The healthier you are as a person, generally the more resistant you'll be. Reflex. Generally, the faster you are dexterity-wise and the more agile, the better reflexes you'll have. Will save is based on wisdom, which is what one of the reasons I want to give him a one here. And what that does is if someone's going to try and take over your mind or someone's going to try and do something mind-altering to you, that's most commonly when the will save comes up. Now, we look at our attacks. Our melee attack, we add our base attack bonus, or BAB. For the fighter at level 3, it's 3. Nice and easy. You add your strength modifier to it, and we don't add any other modifiers. Your CMD is your combat maneuver bonus. This is if you're going to try and grapple someone or trip someone or disarm someone, something that would be considered a combat maneuver, not just swinging your sword at them. Your range then is going to be similar to your base attack, except your dex mod. Again, not too, too difficult. For a weapon now, we'll start going through. Let's say I want my fighter to be as simple as possible. Let's give him a long sword. The total attack bonus is going to be basically what that long sword is. It'll almost, well, it'll be plus six here, right? Except there's some differences. Uh, this is where things can kind of get a little bit, oh, okay, never mind. That doesn't happen until level five. So we don't actually even have to worry about that. So it's simply a plus six. Uh, that means that when I'm in combat and I roll a 20-sided dice to hit something, I'm going to add plus 6. The damage. Now we have to see how much damage a longsword does. So let's go to our equipment and let's look up longsword. We look in the chart here. We see a longsword deals for a medium creature, which a human is, 1d8 points of damage. Damage, 1d8, plus we add our strength to it. Three. So for damage, I mean, what I technically could do here is 1d20 plus 6, and maybe that'll help you better. Most everyone knows, once you're playing for a little while, that a 20-sided dice uh, is what you use to attack. You could do 1d20 plus 6. This number changes, though, this 1d8 plus 3. Now, a critical. So we look through here. A critical for a longsword is a 19 to 20 times 2. What does this mean? A 19 to 20 times 2, and I'll go over criticals later because they're, they're a little bit, they're not super complex, but uh, it's not super important. Uh, what that basically means is the 19 to 20 is that if I roll a 19 or a 20 to hit the enemy, I do what's called threaten critical. So I threaten a chance to hit them if I roll a 19 or a 20. I roll a 20-sider again, and if I hit, them. If my, um, my attack exceeds their AC, I deal two times as much damage to them. Kind of cool. So if I was a 1d8 plus 3, let's say I rolled a 5, add 3 to it is uh, 8. Sometimes some DMs will make you roll another 1d8 plus 3. Others will just multiply it up. That's really based on the DM. The range, pretty simple. Melee. 
Special properties. Nothing's too special about a longsword. Ammo, none. Weight, you can add in if you wanted to. They have it here at four pounds. The size, it's a medium weapon. And the type, it is a slashing weapon. So where that can come into to effect is, um, let's say a skeleton has a damage reduction and he may only take extra, you know, he may be resistant to slashing or piercing, but blunt weapons, you know, a hammer smacking bones is going to be more effective than poking at them with a, with like a, a, a rapier or something. So that's why that is. Let's also give ourselves a range weapon. We're going to give ourselves a longbow. A longbow... We can get the same thing here, 1d20 plus 4. Super easy. It's just your base attack plus your dex. Damage is, uh, oh, you know what, I'll look it up, sorry. Um, we're going to go back into our sheet here, and we want ranged weapons. A longbow is 1d8 for a medium. Cool. 1d8. There is no plus for a basic longbow. So as a ranged weapon, that's kind of the trade-off, is you don't get the plus. There are ways around that. There's what's called composite weapons, but I'm not going to get into that either right now. Critical is times three. If you see a times three, what that means, with no 19 to 20 or no range, what that means is that only a 20 counts for a critical. The range we can look up is, uh, I think, 100 feet. Yep. 100 feet. You can put how much ammo you have for it. Uh, it helps to kind of track that. Uh, weight, I think I saw, was 3. Uh, size is medium. And the type of damage it does is piercing. There we go. The next thing we want to look at is our armor. What are we actually having to protect us? So let's go up and take a look at the armors. Let's go down and take a look at the armors. All right. So there's three types of armors. Light, medium, and heavy. Pretty obvious, heavy stuff is heavier. You need to have the proficiency in order to wear it. So a sorcerer wouldn't really do all that well in full plate. You can take feats to get it, but even still there's going to be some drawbacks. So let's give our warrior, level 3 fighter, we could give him heavy armor, but let's give him just something kind of medium. Let's just give him chain mail. Uh, actually, you know what? We'll give him scale mail. So let's, let's do scale mail. It is being worn by him right now. And we can start going through. The type, it's uh, medium armor. The AC bonus that it grants. So this is how, how well it protects you, is a plus five. The check penalty, this is uh, obviously you might have a problem stealthing or um, climbing a wall or something like that. Skills that affect strength and dexterity, this armor will hurt. Um, and that, that makes sense to us, right? If you try swimming in full chain mail, you're going to have a bad time. If you try stealthing around in scale mail, it's going to be a lot louder than if you're in just leather armor. So we have a minus four penalty. This will get a little bit adjusted, but we'll go over that later. Max dex, this is how your actual dexterity bonus, how high it can be. So for the armor, it allows for three, uh, which again, kind of makes sense. Um, you wouldn't have Legolas in scale mail. You wouldn't have Legolas in full plate mail, right? Legolas really only gets plus one, a maximum. So even if Legolas's dexterity is plus one, eight or plus five or whatever, even if it's really high, he could only get use of one of that. Really not that good for, you know, for someone that's agile. So that basically allows the max dexterity bonus. We want to make sure you always want to make sure when you're picking armor that your max doesn't exceed what they allow. Um, so our scale mail weight, I'm sure they have that, is 30 pounds. Spell failure really doesn't make a difference because we're not casting spells. And speed, oh damn, it lowers us to 20 feet. Makes sense again. If you're wearing heavier armor, it's going to be harder to run in it. So let's drop our speed 
and that all makes sense. Beautiful. We also wanted to give our fighter a shield. He's a sword and board type guy, so let's give him a heavy, a heavy wooden shield. So let's go shield, heavy, wooden. It is being worn right now. The type, it's a shield, uh, wood. You can kind of put in whatever you want there just to kind of remind you of what it is. Uh, I'm probably just going to put in there as such a shield. Um, it grants a plus two armor check, uh, AC bonus. The check, though, is a minus two. And max dex shouldn't play into this at all. Yeah, max dex really only makes sense with a, a tower shield. And the tower shield is that big-ass monster shield, right? It would be harder to move around in that. So if you look, our, our check penalty is at minus six if we're going to use any strength or dexterity-based skill. However, that's only if you're wearing it. Right, I could take, I could put my heavy shield on my back, and then I'll get that, uh, I'll get that two off. So that's that's something to keep in mind that this is only in kind of combat situation. Um, so let's take a look at our AC here. We've got an armor of five that comes from our scale mail. We've got a shield of two, which comes from her dirt the shield, and we've got a dexterity here of one. 13 decks, giving us a total of 18 armor class. Not too, too shabby. That is going to be the first part that I go over, and I'll make another video then going over skills and feats. And we'll have our fighter kind of drawn out. So folks, as always, thank you very much for watching, and uh, please tune into the rest of the episodes. We'll, we'll finish off creating the fighter, and then I'll go into how to make a wizard. I think that could be kind of fun. Definitely gets a little bit more complicated as time goes. So, uh, you know, we'll kind of go on that. We'll make up a couple characters here, um, and uh, we'll go from there. So, as always, folks, thanks for watching. Tune in. Thanks for watching, everybody.